Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here, welcome back to Talk The Wall. This is the 24th installment, and before we get right into any of your responses or questions you may have had, if you haven't seen any of the other 23 installments, then why not go check them out? There is going to be a link in the description of this video for the last Talk The Wall, or you could access the playlist by clicking the I button. But as always, if you have any questions or opinions, do feel free to put them in the comments section of this video because I want a Millwall voice for out. And also, while you're down there, why not put your score predictions for the Scumfop United game also in the comments section while add in your opinions on what you felt went right and wrong in that match. Now, do bear in mind I recorded this on Monday, so if anything has become outdated or if any new news stories appear, then I'll cover them next week in the next Talk The Wall. On to your predictions this week, and of course we have two games, those being Wickham in the Checker Trade Trophy and Shrewsbury in the league. So we're going to start with your predictions against Wickham. And well, none of you actually got the score right. I'm going to be brutally honest there because it's basically down to the fact that no one actually expected us to get beaten by a League 2 side. Nevertheless, if you actually flip the score around, a couple of you would have been correct. Those being Joe Conway, Elite Shee, Jadams and Hassan 1 and I'm 2. Now, Jadams added to what he predicted by saying Smith would get two of the goals and Fred would get the other, along with me. Well, Fred should have scored, but obviously we all know the story there, and I don't want to go too much into it. You guys may have seen or may not have seen my analysis video, but that is where I completely highlight why Fred didn't score the goals. Now, the next predictor was Alfie Ross, who thought that the score would end 4-1, which, given our cup form, would be a fair prediction, and I really think that we should have got a decent result around about that, to be honest. Now, after that, we have a couple of people who predicted the score to end close, closer, well, than obviously the beginning people and that was the scoreline of 2-1 and Liam Buxton, Billy Gibson and Joe Holloway predicted that scoreline. Billy said he thought that Lee Gregory and Aiden O'Brien would score and well Aiden had a couple of chances while he was on the pitch and well Gregory wasn't so that wasn't going to happen but the final predictor for this match was Lucas United and he said the match would end 2-0 to us with Super Harry Smith getting a brace with the goals in the 23rd and 48 minutes in the match. Now onto your predictions onto yet another shot for Millwall and obviously that was against Shrewsbury now the first person that actually came close with their prediction was Elite Shee because he said that we would end up winning 2-1 now what do I mean by this well he said that Millwall would score less goals than everyone else and obviously the fact that Shrewsbury would score one so for say it isn't 100% close but it's closer than what a couple of you were next to be closest was a quite a lot of people actually that said the score would end 2-0 those were Red Army TV vlogs Joe Conway Jadam and Liam Buxton. Jadam said that he thought that Lee Gregory and Shane Ferguson would have scored. He also said, come on, you Lions. Now, I don't usually get involved in predictions, usually because I have to write the score down on a bit of paper. And then some weeks I just don't feel like I can call it because Millwall are Millwall. They don't always perform the best way, do they? This is why we're here right now. And well, I'm only doing this because Liam Buxton commented, who do you or what do you think, should I say, the score will be between Millwall and Shrewsbury? Now, I'll share what I thought, and this is genuine. I actually thought that the score would end with a pretty good solid win for Mill, getting a 3-0 win overall. And, well, I know that I get most of the scores wrong, so, again, I'm wrong with this one. But three of you also said that the scoreline would end 3-0. Those were Hassan 1, Naim 2, Joe Holloway, and Alfie Ross. Now, Billy Gibson's prediction was close to that as he said the score would end 3-1. He also said that Harry Smith would get a double and Fred would get the other goal. The next prediction after that was far off, but I'd say it was a better prediction in terms of I would have really expected the result to have gone this way. And well, that was Lucas United. He said that the score would end 4-0. He said that Harry Smith would score in the 11th minute. Gregory would score both in the 16th and 88th minute. And Fred would score in the 62nd minute. Now, the final person to predict was RC Gaiman. And he said the scoreline would end 4-1 to Millwall. Moving into your comments for this week, and we start with two comments by the same person, which was Joe Holloway. His first comment was, Webster by far did not have the best of games. Now, I completely agree with you on this one. He got bodied by a non-league player, which led to one of their goals. Now, I actually want to pose a question for you guys. Is Webster deserving a first team place at the moment due to his current performances? Do let me know in the comments section of this video. Now, 
The second comment was that his first game was Remembrance Day six years ago against Sheffield United. We lost 1-0, so not the greatest introduction. And well, I was actually reading up about this game, and well, obviously it isn't the greatest of results. We don't want to lose, but... If you have a look at what actually happened in the game, who play in and all that sort of stuff, then only one player that started the game is actually still with Millwall, and that's Steve Morrison. That's pretty interesting. Also, Ched Evans was playing for Sheffield United then, and Neil Harris was on the bench. So the more you learn, I guess, that was pretty interesting. Thought you guys would appreciate that one. The next person to comment was Liam Buxton and he said, do you think that Neil Harris will leave soon and who do you think will be the top goal scorer this season? And well, I've got to say that there will be a lot of you that actually want to see Harris maybe leave at the moment and you can't go liking this comment just because we lost. I see those two likes on that comment. But no, in all seriousness, I think that Neil will be with us for a pretty long time and I'd say for time frame about five years or so because to be honest, he's the best man for the job he's brought through the youth players and I just it feels better this way I don't like the football all the time I'm gonna be brutally honest but it seems to work getting the youth players through and sometimes in the past where we had older players it isn't always the best and so with younger players getting game time I can't think we're really gonna go wrong obviously we may not get promoted this year but we just have to see it's not the worst case scenario in the end now for the question of who I think would be top goal scorer this is is really tricky I'm gonna be honest but I think I'm gonna to have to go with Lee Gregory just for the fact he's our most proven goal scorer so that we actually have in the team so I think that that really makes sense in the fact that he'll probably score the most goals but honorable mentions here would be Harry Smith and Aidan O'Brien as they might be able to give him a run for his money if they get on a good goal scoring run so we just have to see how that one goes but you watch the space on who's going to be the top goal scorer it's going to be pretty interesting I really really think that it could be quite the one to watch it's Sinclair HD was the next person to comment and he said you can use some of my footage from yesterday if you want now if you don't know that was actually before for the brain tree game or after should I say so that was a pretty nice gesture but I've got to say thank you for that but I like to record my own footage to use in my videos just for the fact it's just I like to have my own personal touch on it but I do sincerely thank you so much and well I actually watched the vlog that he did and I would actually like you guys to see if you could go watch it as well give him some support everyone likes to see Mill content and well he actually said that he wanted to see me in the vlog so maybe next time you're down there let me know and obviously I might be able to talk to you there I do have Twitter you could add me if you want to and you can talk to me the link is in the bottom of the description I do apologize that's the only place I can put it now Riley was the next person to comment and he asked me would you want Kenny Jacket to come back and if so what would Harris do now before I say anything that is a great question now I wouldn't want Kenny to come back to the den because I think the football has changed a lot since he has left us in a championship and well I think that it won't be good for the youth players, personally. I like the youth players. I like the way that Mill's philosophy is sort of bringing younger players through. I, I think that works. But if Kenny comes in, I don't think that'll work so much because Kenny Jacket, as much as I liked him and he was a great Millwall manager, he didn't really use the younger players. And there are a lot of younger players that could have had potential that never really met that potential in the end. I'd say maybe John Marquis, but then you would laugh at me if I even said that. Now, if we just talk about about where Harris would go well I'd say it'd probably be the youth coach if that isn't a possibility then he may go to a local club for example South End he has played for them and that he is actually a local lad so you never know that might actually be a plausible option now the final comment was by Lucas United and he said when we play teams like Braintree and Scumford they're called the Irons so when we play them I think of West Ham so we'll win oh we ate West Ham we ate West Ham we ate West Ham I don't really know what to say with this one I'm gonna be brutally honest but you guys do love to get me to sing which is slightly odd because I'm definitely not lining up to get any record labels anytime soon because I am a terrible singer but nevertheless cheers for the comment and let's take a look at our weekly installment of the loan watch and well Paris Cohen Hall played 70 minutes and also got an assist for Wickham in their 2-0 win against Notts County not too bad he's actually progressing really nicely out there and David Ford played a full 90 minutes as he kept a clean sheet for Portsmouth 
on their travels as they beat Groomsby 1-0. And as for Rian Bray and Harry Gerlin, well, Bray came on as a sub at halftime for Howells, and Gerlin, he was an unused sub in Wellens. 8-1 win in the FA Trophy over Hove Town. Now, that is a crazy big scoreline, and I don't really know too much about non-league football, but that's, yeah, that's a lot of goals. So it's nice to see everyone get game time on their loans. And actually, I will be talking about another player who's just gone out on loan in the Millwall News. So stay tuned for that. Now, into the matches that Millwall played this week. And well, neither of the two were the results that you could have actually anticipated. I mean, let's be honest, no one expected for us to crash out of the Checker Trade Trophy or even lose to a side at the bottom of League One. I'm going to be honest. If you did, well, congratulations, because that is really, really really absurd to think that. Now, obviously our first match was against Wickham. It ended 3-1 and well, it was a disaster from start to finish. Now, I didn't actually go to that game, but I heard Tom King was all over the place and from what I saw in the highlights, Nelson was really rubbish. He gave away a penalty while a player that actually shone in this game was David Wall. He scored from, well, a very hard angle and I personally feel that he probably scored it because not many people would have expected him to have scored from there. But nevertheless, a goal is a goal and he played pretty well. Now, as for the Shrewsbury game, well, I did go to that one and our defence was all over the place. The attackers struggled to challenge and, well... Otherwise, Lutweiler made pretty good saves to stop us if we did do well. And, well, Nelson again. I think he was awful. Just like he was against Wickham, I honestly don't know why he got the call up. Obviously, only Neil Harris will know, but I really do question that. And, to be honest, I thought, try Malubu. He could be pretty good, obviously. You never know. Youth teams are different to playing in real life but I hear that he's wanted by some big clubs so it just would have made sense in my head maybe Paul Rooney you never know but obviously yeah that didn't happen I'm not the manager and well Neil has a different way of doing things Fred was also poor at spells in the match he did improve on his performance against Wickham and to be honest I think that Shane Ferguson needed a clone as he was doing absolutely everything and he was my key player for that match and because of that I made Shane Ferguson my player of the week as he created so many chances and it's not easy fault if strikers forget how to put the ball in the back of the net. I'm going to be brutally honest there. He was superb. Obviously, Gregory also did really well, but I think that Ferguson deserved this player of the week, potentially award, whatever you call it these days. Now, we're into our final section of the podcast. Yes, that's right. Here's the Millwall news. And our first story comes from the FA Cup as Millwall drew a home tie against AFC Bournemouth. I don't know how many of you have been around on my channel long enough to know that I actually have a Bournemouth shirt from last season. I do pretty well like Bournemouth and I want to go to that game regardless of whatever the result happens. I'm a huge fan of Eddie Howe and well I think that Callum Wilson is a fantastic striker and there is also a prospect of Benic Afobe returning to the den. How cool is that? I know they're a Premier League side and all but those factors in itself have made me really excited and I cannot wait to see if I can go to that game. Now if you remember last week me saying about Fred's contract negotiations then this one might be pretty interesting for you guys to hear this week as Neil Harris has said that Mill are trying to extend Sean Williams deal at the club Neil called him a big player and said that Mill will struggle when he's not playing which I do 100% agree with there and well Williams is one of the three players who will be out of contract come the end of the season with the others being Craig and Fred speaking of futures Paris Cohen Hall has said that he doesn't know whether he'll be returning to play for Mill or not despite his loan ending on the 1st of January which is pretty close I'm gonna be honest it ain't that far with a very few games to go till that point and he says that he hopes to play football wherever he goes and hopes to keep the same standard no matter what club he's at except obviously people are saying that it may just be that his forms at Wickham but obviously I don't know it might be worth checking him out but we'll have to wait and see if he returns or not but I'm hoping that Paris does return because it just add a little bit more diversity to the team obviously he might get injured again and then we're in the same scenario but obviously we'll just see from there talking of Wickham after getting knocked out of the check a trade trophy. Neil Harris said that the trophy is great as it gave us a chance to give six young players the senior debuts. These include Smith, Farrell, Cheeseman, Brown, Twaddock and Rooney and it also gave fringe players a chance to impress in the cup so it really worked out well for us. Those are the words of Neil Harris. On the talk of Paul Rooney though, he has gone out on a 28 day loan to Torquay. Now at the time of me recording this, they are 17th in the National League after 
losing 2-0 to Braintree. Yes, the side we did actually beat quite recently. Now, Rooney did make his first start in that one, and he will be featuring in Lone Watch from next Lone Watch onwards, which is obviously going to be pretty interesting to see how the youngster does. I rate him highly, and I hope that he will do really well at that load, and maybe use it to get some time at Millwall. Now, the next story is to do with another youngster in Harry Smith after he was interviewed about his rise to where he is with Millwall now. And his interview that he said, last year, I didn't want to play professionally. I sort of gave up my dream to focus on becoming a welder. So football became the second thing in importance of my life. But lucky for me, I went on trial with Millwall. Now, look at me now. I definitely didn't expect to have the match ball and have my full debut so quickly. It's all happened so fast, but I continue to prove what I'm made of. And well, this final bit of news will be so juicy for you guys. I think you've been waiting for January to happen with the transfer window, with the rumours, but this one is particularly my favourite that I've heard so far. Millwall are in the market for a potential loan return for fan favourite Jed Wallace. I mean, I loved him last season and I know you guys did as well, so this could be pretty interesting if it does happen. Now, news is that Wallace has fallen out of favour since Paul Lambert's become the Wolves manager and, well, Millwall do if they want to get him, have to battle their rivals Cholton for Wireless, but Harris said that he loved him at the Den last season and I personally feel that this move would add something fantastic for Millwall's attacking line which has sometimes struggled plus Jed Wallace did say that he liked playing at Millwall when he was last there so who knows but I really really am looking forward to actually paying attention to what's happening with this one so so that is all we got time for for today at least do feel free to put your questions and opinions in the comments section for the next talk to all however before I go don't forget to put your score predictions for the Scunthorpe United game in the comments section as next week I'll be covering that game and highlighting the good and bad points in it so while you're down there also why don't you tell me your opinions of the match and how Millwall are as whole obviously maybe even rate the team as we are coming close to January and it'd be pretty interesting to see what you guys think halfway through the season so like comment subscribe and of course I will see you guys next week for the next talk to wall but until then goodbye